Hello, everybody. Um, and today uh, I'm speaking with Puleng uh, Motswani, who recently graduated from her PhD in education. And more specifically, she was focusing on higher education. So today we'll be talking about, you know, her experience of going through the, the PhD. And she'll have a lot of good tips and strategies that, you know, we've applied together to help her uh, move through the PhD and successfully graduate. So, you know, thanks for uh, for coming along, Pulang. Thanks, Marek. Thanks for inviting me and thanks for your time. So can you tell us, like, maybe very quickly and the people who are listening to us, you know, what specifically you focused on and what you what you do? Okay, thanks. As Mark have already mentioned, my name is Puleng Motswana. I'm based in South Africa, Johannesburg. My doctoral study was in the field of education, but specifically higher education studies. And I did my research in 20 public higher education institutions out of the 26 that we have. And when I joined the program, I had already started with my PhD. I started the program when I was battling to write my results and through the help of the course and the feedback that I got from Marek, then I was able to cross that conceptual threshold. Mm -hmm. okay, so why, why did you decide to join the program, Pulang, in the first place? Because I remember, you know, it was, I think, back in December 2020, I think when we first started working together. So what, what made you decide to kind of, to, to start working with me? Yeah, as I've already mentioned, is that I had already collected my data and analyzed it by that time. But then it was so difficult for me to present my findings on paper. And because I was frustrated, time was running out for me, the clock was ticking and I needed someone to explain to me how to present my results. And this was my main reason for joining. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit more like what, what specifically you were struggling with when it comes to presenting your results? You did a qualitative study, right? As far as I remember. Yes, I did a qualitative study, but then, you know, when, when writing the, the results, it was, it was actually difficult for me because my supervisor kept on saying, saying to me that I should show, don't tell, show, don't tell. My supervisor is a brilliant supervisor. She told that she told me that uh, several times, but I couldn't still cross that conceptual threshold until Marek looked at my drafts and helped me to actually present my findings the way they should be presented. And the other thing that also helped was the material and the course content also because it clarified everything. And I realized that uh, with this program, it helps because Marek dedicates his time to supporting students like myself. The supervisor was saying more or less the same thing, but for some reason, the way Marek explained it, it became clear for me to to be able to do what I was expected to do. And I think with supervisors, they don't have enough time to sit down and spend time with the, with the students. Whereas with Marek, he dedicates his time to supporting people in a group or as individuals. And that really helped me, I must say. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's awesome. So like what, how, how did specifically perhaps what we did differ or how how did it help you to kind of to get that idea because it sounds like you know your supervisor was telling you the same thing but somehow it's it didn't click for you before yes i, I think that the, the, the course content how it explains it because the course contents gives you step-by-step -step process like starting from the thesis even though for me i had already started so i just started with the course from presenting the results. So the way that it's structured with the worksheets and the and how Marek explains, because there's always a video and the worksheets that you can 
use after that. And for me, most of all was the constructive and timely feedback that I got with my, my drafts that I sent to Marek, that was very much helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, how, how did that feedback work for you? Or why, you know, how, how did it help you to improve? The feedback helped me to improve. It helped me to improve like, it was only after the feedback that when I read other people's articles, like maybe reading only the, the discussion and the research chapters that I could actually understand how they got there. Previously I read, but I, I couldn't relate as such, but I think it's until you do something that it really makes sense to you even though it didn't make, like initially I thought it made sense until I had to do it. And there was a time when I was frustrated and someone said to me, I shouldn't be frustrated with myself because it's a learning process. I'm doing something that I've never done before. And that was an encouragement for me. And, and for instance, with the feedback that I got from Marek, uh, he always said, uh, present the argument, then present the data. And because I had a lot of data, uh, like I had a, a lot to say about a single issue, but then he reminded me, he kept on reminding me that I can't repeat one issue over and over again. Then I can just present maybe three or four data codes to support the argument that I'm making. And that was very much helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So like your supervisor mentioned like in the results you shouldn't you should show not tell not so, tell, like, yes. so what what is your kind of biggest lesson from writing the results chapter that maybe you could share with other phd students who are perhaps struggling with the same thing like well, what did you learn from the process well what does it mean that you shouldn't you should show and not tell yes because uh, uh, the show and not tell which i didn't understand then initially, but I understood after working with you with several feedback that you gave me, I, I realized that what I was doing, I was actually discussing my findings before I could present the data as evidence. So I was supposed to show the data as evidence, the argument that I'm making without telling people what the data said that was supposed to come after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what I also learned from you is that it was a four-step process to present the argument, then you present the data, then maybe you can present three or four sets of data as I did in my case, because it was a huge study. Then after that, you sort of close that, that argument and then only bring in the literature to support the argument that you have made, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a breakthrough for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So you can, the, the show part from what your supervisor was telling you is basically yes, you have yes. to show the data, even if it's qualitative data, you have to show yes, us the quality. Yes, 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 yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and only tell after. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now that you've, you've graduated successfully, what, like, what, what lessons have you learned or what advice would you give to you know, to other PhD students who are perhaps in a similar situation right now that you were, you know, a year and a half ago, frustrated with the, with the progress, you know, what, what lessons have you learned that you could share with others? What I can share with others is that we need to allow ourselves to be vulnerable. We need to allow ourselves to share our writing, no matter how bad it is share it with someone and in terms of the program, I found it to be a safe space where I could share my frustrations, where I could share my, my writing without the fear of being judged. I don't know whether that comes with time or not, but I was in a, able to, in a position to share my writing without fear of being judged because I knew you were there to to support me through the process. And I remember that I used to submit either weekly or every second week because I was always trying to, to... Remember I mentioned when I started that 
time was running against me. So mm -hmm. to dedicate my time to the PhD doesn't mean that I didn't have challenges. I had other personal challenges, but like I appreciated having you as someone who will read my work before I send it to my supervisor. Even though here and there, as you as you already mentioned within the course, that is not everything that you say that the supervisor will agree with. But most of all, I would like to say people should allow themselves to be vulnerable, share your writing, no matter how bad it is. I remember someone once said to me, or oh, it was a blog that I read that the only perfect PhD is a submitted PhD. I didn't understand it then, but as I was writing my results and having someone like Marek to, to read my work and give me feedback, I always made sure that I send you something and that really helped. It saved me a lot of time and I appreciate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a big thing that stops a lot of people is, is the fear of feedback, isn't it? The, the, the fear of, of being judged, I suppose, but then that means that you're not sharing your work and therefore you can't get any feedback and therefore you can't learn and you're kind of yes, constantly yes. stuck in the same place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's the other reason that we have we have uh, supervisors and the reason that we have people who are willing to be to review our work because we, we can't correct ourselves, we can't learn from our mistakes unless we share our work for feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So now you know you've you've finished the PhD. What's 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 next for you? What what are the the next steps? Okay, the next steps is to publish from my from my study. I've already presented a sort. I've already published a paper, which also helps me uh, structure my argument. And you gave me again uh, uh, with that paper constructive feedback. And I would say yes, constructive, but mainly mainly timely feedback because I didn't have to wait for a long time. At the most, I would wait for a week for you to give me feedback. And as I'm waiting for feedback, I would be waiting, working on another section that I could send to you. And that's what I appreciated the most. Yeah, I've already published a paper and now I'm working on the paper that I sent to you. And also as soon as I'm done with that paper, which is due in two weeks time, then I will be starting on working on a different paper as well while I'm, while I'm waiting for feedback for this current paper. Yeah, I'm looking forward to making my study known internationally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. questions, of course. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, you know, congratulations once again on your, on your success. I mean, you did all the hard work there. So, you know, hats off to you for persisting and, and actually doing it and, making yourself vulnerable, as you said, in your own words to, to the feedback. So, so yeah, that's, that's amazing. And, and congratulations once again. Thank you. Thanks. I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much.